Hi Rush Nation, welcome to Rush TV. We're taking today's show out on the road here at Wheaton GM in Saskatoon. They've been with us since the beginning from those days in Edmonton and are now an official vehicle partner of your Saskatchewan Rush. Now when we last left you, the team had just won three straight and players were off to enjoy a bye week. Well, during that time, the National Lacrosse League trade deadline was up and the Rush brought in some experience. Two on one break. Met in front of the net, the shot he scored. 15 years in the National Lacrosse Scott League, Campbell. the last nine with the Rochester Nighthawks. Now Scott Campbell has joined the Rush. Big shoot scores. It came as a, a bit of a shock, right? Been in Rochester a long time, you know, to end up in Saskatchewan with the Rush. I mean, uh, great fan support uh, first and foremost, and been an excellent team for the last, you know, five to ten years here. Super happy to be uh, part of the Rush. The defender was traded to Saskatchewan for a second round pick in the 2022 NLL entry draft along with a conditional second round pick in 2021. I was fortunate enough to coach him in Team Canada in 2015, got to know him pretty well then. Still moves really well, he's got great feet, smart player. He's a gritty guy, he's pretty physical. He'll fit into our system well. And now here we go, we got Rubis against Scott Campbell. The 37 year old from Markham, Ontario is a champion defender, helping Rochester win three consecutive championships from 2012 to 2014 not to mention battling against the Rush in the NLL Finals last season. I know his expectations coming in here is to be part of a championship team, and, you know, that's why we brought him in, is to win another one. Campbell, who's nicknamed Soupy, has played with other Rush stars over the years, and even has history with Mark Matthews. Funny story, Mark Matthews, during my junior years, was my ball boy, right? So uh, I've known Mark for, for a long time. Campbell set career highs last season, with six goals, 14 assists, and 20 points to go with 80 loose ball scoops and 11 cause turnovers. But the veteran says this recent move has him feeling like a rookie. Yeah, I was like, did I pack everything? It, it just like routines off a little bit. But again, I think with the group here, they'll, they'll put their arms around me and you know get me kind of used to it. All right, I get it. While there may be a number of different names on the Rush roster this year, the team's core has remained intact and stronger than ever. One player who was also a trade deadline acquisition in 2015 has been instrumental in every Rush championship run. And while he may seem to fly under the radar, we're turning the spotlight on Matthew Dinsdale. A guy that doesn't take a lot of shots here for the Rush with all the stars that they have on offense. He's the star of discipline, focus, and intent. Just a reliable player, you know, he gets out there every five and five shifts and grinds and gets open in the middle of the floor and goes about his business. A mid-season trade from Calgary to the then Edmonton Rush in 2015, Matthew Dinsdale has become a key part of the Rush offense. And Dinsdale buries it, that's its fourth as a member of the Rush. Known to the team as Marty, he fit in easily with the other Coquitlam BC boys he grew up playing with. Since my second year in novice, so I don't even know what that would be since about 10, 11 years old. So uh, it's been a long time. I mean, he, it's been a lot of fun. He's a great player. He's a great guy. I've always known when Marty's capable as a player. He's got skill like no other. He works just as hard as everyone else. And yeah, he's bringing it to the table. Uh, he does little things that you might not notice as a, as a casual cross fan. Just getting in the dirty area, setting picks. And you know, you might see one of us other ready scoring, but you might not notice that it was Marty that set the pick that got us open for the goal. And that's stuff like that that you know you don't really get credit for in the stat sheet, but uh, we noticed it. Five minutes into this third quarter. Hit tight. Keenan with a shot. He scores, and the Rush have their largest lead of the game. He's one of the smartest players I've ever played with. He came into, we run a pretty complicated offense, and uh, Matthew came into our offense and picked it up in two days. I was on my second year, and still, he knew more than me within three weeks. Rush offense on the floor for the first time. Dinsdale with a shot, and he scores. Now in his seventh season with the National Lacrosse League, Dinsdale has developed his style, and any comments of being underrated are taken as a compliment. I pride myself as part of my game doing the, the little things that it takes for not only me to be successful but for the offense to run. It's all about the five guys on the floor and having that team success. This evening for Robert Church will fire right on him, right through the wickets, Robert Church. With that approach, Dinsdale has built his success. Dinsdale shoots and scores. Great. He set career highs last season with 23 goals, 22 assists for 45 points, along with 39 loose ball scoops and his most games played in a season at 17. 
now with 13 goals and 17 assists. In the first 11 games this season, Dinsdale keeps building. I feel personally I've been playing pretty well, but you know, it, it only matters how the team is doing and right now. We all know that we can be we can be doing a little bit more. His attitude has served the team well in every championship run. Just one example, in last season's deciding game three, he scored a pair of second half goals and added three loose ball scoops for a 15-10 championship win over Rochester. But it's this moment in front of Edmonton fans for the final time in the championship game that Dinsdale left his mark in rush history. Josh coming down, spins back to Dinsdale, shooting score! That's a highlight of my career. It's hard to kind of top that one, to be in front of the home crowd and to get that goal to go one up with, uh, with 60 seconds left on the clock there was, was pretty special. Some traditions are universal, like dreaming of the road ahead, the joy of arriving at your destination, and remembering the people you shared those moments with. We make sure those memories are clear because no matter where life may take you, Glassmasters is part of your journey. There are names here that go way back, building this community generation after generation. We are Mosaic, and we add our name to theirs to tell a story of innovation, of sustainability, of strength. Day after day, our commitment reflects our employees' efforts to create a legacy we can all share. Together, we can see tomorrow from here. Hi, my name is Lucina, and I am your TD Junior Reporter. Today, I will be interviewing Jeremy Thompson. What's your favorite sport other than playing lacrosse? My favorite sport probably be, had to be golf. It's relaxing, it's out, it's out in nature, you got some trees, and it's, it's a little bit challenging. I'm not the best at it. How old were you when you started to play lacrosse? I was seven years old when I first picked up my first lacrosse stick, but before that, I played backyard, a lot of backyard ball with my brothers. Cool. Do you have any pre-game rituals? Pre-game rituals, a fresh braid before every game. It's a must. Do you have any siblings and do they play lacrosse? I have three younger brothers that play for uh, Georgia Swarm, Miles, Lyle, and Jerome, and I have a younger sister, she is 24. Do you have a favorite rivalry team? Probably that'd be Calgary Roughnecks. I mean, uh, it used to be at a Battle of Pri Prairies when we were in Edmonton. It still kind of feels like that even though we're in Saskatchewan. Thanks for your time, Jeremy. Thank you, you too. Three-time champions, your Saskatchewan Rush, are sitting atop the Western Division and coming off a bye to face a challenging East Division rival. All dressed in green for a St. Patrick's party. Saskatchewan Rush fans packed Sass Tell Centre to watch the Rush take on the Buffalo Bandits. Ready to go here the number Jackson one team in the go. NLL, Bandits strike ball. first. And now a shot in tight and a goal by Dane Smith. The Rush with the number one power play, converting two-thirds of their opportunities as Priolo scores short-handed. Great individual effort by the Bandits captain. But the Bandits' aggressive play nets them three early penalties. Penalty shot. That is the oh, it's a penalty it shot. Is. Yeah. Absolutely, Jumbo. It's going to be Jeff Shatler who's going to take this penalty shot for the rush. Rush Nation on their feet. Jeff Shatler runs up for the penalty shot. Fires and Matt Vince. Makes the save. So it's a me. tough one for the Two rush, but Chatler battles back over. quick. Now a chance to the side of the goal. Chatler dies and scores. Jeff Chatler and Matt Pence is fired up here. He doesn't think that should count. Yeah, it counts. Rush, get the go, rush, go, chant. And here comes looking great. Keenan, who buries it past Matt Pitts, ends up in the goal. And the crowd oh, is hyped. As Ryan Keenan takes it strong to the rack right here, as Hogarth finished off his check on Keenan after he pumped it into the back of the goal, but he goes far side. A slashing call on Thompson gives Buffalo the man advantage. As the Bandits go to work, Dean Smith now up top, it's small. 
Back in the defense, down Kirk with the save, rebound for Hogarth. Oh, what a great stop. stop and another chance, they score. Dane Smith on the third opportunity. Looking to even things save. out. For Matthews, now McIntosh in the middle, scores! Ben McIntosh, and we're all tied at three. Uh, I don't know how many opportunities Ben McIntosh has had so far in this game. He sticks that one into the back of the goal. As he got a chance right in the slot, goes low to the stick side on that Vince. But just as the good guys catch up. 18-12, small oh going down, or rather that's Evans. Great job there by Sean Evans. It's 4-3 Bandits heading into the second. Just 30 rebound. seconds in. He's all alone, in on goal. Messenger fires and scores. Mike Messenger, short-handed goal for four. Uh, Mike Messenger has taken his game to another level this season, and he's doing it in transit. His shooting percentage is off the charts. The Bandits Four respond spin. quick. And once again, Vince has gone to the bench, a six on five here for the Bandits, and they get a goal out of it. Quick six finish there. Buffalo five. maintains a one goal lead for most of the quarter. Two and a half left, the rush on a power play. Dinsdale out there, now Matthews and Keenan. Insdale call, or McIntosh calling, and Matthews. Gets the score will stay tied at five into the half, thanks to some great work by Evans Rush goaltender Evan Kirk. The Rush with 29 shots on goal so far, and there's a chance in tight. What a save from Evan Kirk. Are you the kidding save me? Of the half. Oh my goodness. Sean Evans will scoop up the loose ball. We'll have a Buffalo timeout, and that'll give us a chance to look at this Evan Kirk Are save you? once again. Oh my <laughs> word. Lacrosse and Ryan Flaherty right there from Evan Kirk. This scarecrow stop in a beauty here from Kirky. But Saskatchewan gets dealt a blow to start the third. Smith with the low shot. Kirk. Gets in front of that one. Kirk is helped off after a lower body injury, sending backup goaltender Adam Shute to net, while the Bandits capitalize on the disruption. There's a shot and a goal, and it's Chris Fluche. This is it back for Hogarth. Now Durston from distance, and he beats Shute through the five hole. That's one you know Shute wants back. Durston backing down his man, fires right on. Shute gets the save. Durston the rebound. A little cross up there by Jordan Durston. Oh, the ball went the wrong direction. I don't know what happened. Just one too many fakes for Durston. And there's a shot that beats shooting through the five hole. The rush offense getting stopped by Matt Vince. And emotions run hot. It was. They were tangled up and they Rivish went down easily. I think he got a little tripped up, but he was ready to go with Briolo to try and spark a comeback here. Two big boys were about to get after it. They'll both head for the penalty box now. Later, Corey Buffalo Small with a man advantage. Now Small backs in and scores. Awesome. Just over a minute left. A lot of now McIntosh sprinting for goal and he finds it. Finally, the rush get on the board in the third. A big goal for Ben McIntosh. Uh, scoreless in a quarter no more is Ben McIntosh. Comes stormy, rushing, if you will, Ryan, off the Saskatchewan bin. And slots that one, glove side low. Pass Matt Vince on the run. Rush back within three, and man, did they ever need that one. It's 9-6 Bandits as we start the fourth. Just 15 seconds in. And the Bandits looking for their seventh win in eight games. Mark Matthews, though, will narrow the gap right there as he picks the far side. And just like that, the mailman gets the rush back within two. And we're not done yet. Rush coming back up the floor. Bielich with the screen, and Mike Messenger gets his second of the game, and the Rush are back within one. Mike Messenger in transition is absolutely deadly. The guy doesn't miss when he shoots the ball. Put him up on offense, Ryan Flaherty. Fight home for Messenger. We got a one goal game. Well, Nick Bielich hasn't scored a goal here this season, but he sets a nice screen there for Mike Messenger, opening up a shooting lane, and Mess makes no mistake there. Can't get away from Corbeil. Evans, excuse me. Now McKay gets around Rubish. Fire, shoot. It's behind him and in. Oh, that's a tough one right there. A shoot got a piece, but not enough. But set up on offense here as that pass is knocked down. Matthews will pick it up. Still plenty of time on the shot clock as Matthews buries it over the right left shoulder of Matt Vince. A great seeing eye shot from Mark Matthews. And once again, it's a one goal game. Crowd.
making some noise here for their boys in green and black. As Matthews winds and oh. scores, Mark Matthews, oh. his fourth of the night, and we are all tied at 10. That was Express Post. First side, top corner this time for Matthews. His heat up here in the fourth quarter as another missile out of the stick of the mailman. It's 10-10. Well, not that Mark Matthews has had a bad season oh at all. Oh, my, look at where that shot goes. He Max. has been tremendous this season, but this might be his best performance so far, and the Rush have needed every bit of it. His fourth goal of the night, seventh point, and that is an absolute laser beam. And now Messenger squirts out from under coverage. Gets it up to Matthews. Matthews being bothered there by Gilray. Shatler into the corner. Curtis Knight, McIntosh coming over in support. Now Knight cuts to the middle. Matt Shatler fires and scores! That one surprised Matt Vince, and Jeff Shatler gives the Rush their first lead of the game. Maybe the first one that was a bit of a softie on Vince here tonight. It comes courtesy of Jeff Shatler. Might have changed directions as it goes through the five hole of Vino and the Rush into the lead for the first time tonight, Ryan Flaherty. It's 11-10 with 6.05 to go. What a time to get their first lead. And Jeff Shatler, he scored three straight game winners. With Hold just up. over two Four minutes eight. left. Behind the goal, he goes for Evans. Evans comes out front and a sneaky shot there. Then a penalty against the rush. And double damage here as it's their best checker going to the penalty box here with 1.46 to go in the game. As small, the rush have to be alert here. Evans wide open, there's a shot behind the goal, and it stays out. I don't know how that didn't go in. Adam shoots, stopped that with a stick. Oh my goodness, and now Corbeil scoops it up, and the rush will get a timeout with 15 seconds oh, left. Watch the replay on this one more time, Flex. Wow, shoot with a massive save, takes the game into sudden death overtime. A first for the rush this season. Mark Matthews has four goals tonight. Jeff Shatler has a pair. He's been the magic man in crunch time for the rush in the last month. Can he do it again as he gets around Weiss? Shatler fakes the pass, now back to his feet. McIntosh collides there with Matthews, now gets the ball, and Vince with a big save there. Fresh 30 for the Bandits. Sean Evans with Hossack watching him. Hasek hits right up into the grill of Sean Evans. Now Kluche, low shot, wide of the goal. Now behind and they score. Oh, shoot got turned around and they found the ball and it looks like it's Corey Small, I believe. Uh, or was it Chase Evans? Brazer. Oh, it was Brazer who picked it up. His shoot second overtime looking. winner in a row oh, for boy. the Bandits. After review, the Buffalo shooter stays out of the crease until the ball crosses the goal line. The goal call is confirmed. Game over. And once again, the Bandits send Rush Nation home less than a new. Howdy folks, Ryan Flaherty alongside Jake Elliott here in Saskatoon as the Buffalo Bandits win a thriller in overtime, 12-11 over the Saskatchewan Rush, snapping the Rush's three-game winning streak, and that is the seventh victory in eight games for the Buffalo Bandits. And tonight, it was all about their goaltender, Matt Vince. He was unbelievable, was the six-time goaltender of the year, Matt Vince. Exceptional save after save after save. I really felt like Saskatchewan outplayed Buffalo for the majority of this game. Although they trailed for the majority of it, they finally took the lead at 11-10 before Sean Evans would tie things late to send it to overtime. And then Chase Fraser finds a loose ball in the back of the goal. Nobody knew where the ball was except for Chase Fraser. He scoops it up and dunks it into the back of the net. His second overtime winning goal for the Buffalo Bandits as they keep it going. And uh, man, if that is a preview of what we're going to see later on in June in the NLL Finals, sign me up because that was a heck of a lacrosse game here tonight. Evan Kirk lost to an injury in the third quarter. It was Adam Shute who came in in relief, played pretty well, but he takes the loss for the rush as we see the winner there. From Chase Fraser, the Bandits, for the second straight trip to Saskatoon, they pull out an overtime victory as they improve to 11-3. The rush fall to 6-5. They'll be on the road for the first trip ever to San Diego to take on the expansion Seals next week. The Bandits back home to take on the Toronto Rock. That's the story from SaskTel Center as the Bandits beat the rush in overtime 12-11. We come from a unique place where Lake Country could be your own backyard or hundreds of miles away. There's urban, suburban, country, proud. 
We are unique, and our networks are too. Built, owned, and operated with pride. These are your networks, Saskatchewan. We built something amazing, and six years of awards prove it. Over the next year, SaskTel is investing over $300 million into your networks to keep connecting you to what matters most. Imagine, there I was eating lunch when suddenly I get this shooting pain. Turns out I needed a root canal. Thankfully, Blue Cross had my back. If you're retired, self-employed, or don't have group insurance, you can count on Blue Cross. We provide coverage for many medical expenses that may not be fully covered by your provincial health care plan, like dental, prescription drugs, vision, registered therapists, and more. Visit our website or contact your insurance broker. Sport's definitely been growing since, since the rush has come to town. That's no secret. It's brought a new attitude to all of Saskatchewan for lacrosse. It's been an amazing experience all around. A Plus S came on as a huge sponsor this year and really focused around their Youth Plus S program. So they're really involved in getting kids involved in sport and community engagement, which is really helpful for us because we do both of those things. We have to play our part in regards to our social responsibility to focus on the youth of Saskatchewan. Those are our future leaders. We want to help build students uh, understand what it is to be professional in the sport and build character and hopefully engage the professionals to understand how they got to where they are today. We get lots of opportunities being partnered with K-Plus-S from bringing a lot of kids from across Saskatchewan to our games to going to the YMCA and teaching them a little bit about lacrosse with our players. Every time the Rush score a goal at home, they donate $100 to a different youth organization each game. So they're spreading the love. As much as it's a donation, it's also an investment. So anytime we're able to do that type of stuff, it helps the community at large. Welcome back to Rush TV. A big thanks to K Plus S Potash for supporting your Saskatchewan Rush and youth across the province. Now many local sports and community groups rely on donations to operate and excel. And that's why the Saskatchewan Rush launched a new fundraising initiative this year to help all kinds of organizations in Saskatchewan. <laughs> We are the Saskatoon Roller Derby League. We are in our 12th season, so it started in the fall of 2007. We are league run, so we literally have to fundraise for everything, like the practice space that you see here. We have a lot of international tournaments that we have to go to. Jerseys, we're getting new jerseys this year. A lot of expense to play a sport that we love. We love to get involved with our community. This gives us an opportunity to do so by helping teams raise money for their groups and then bringing people to our games and getting them to experience them for the first time. We are able to sell large groups of tickets to groups at a discounted rate and then they sell them for a little bit cheaper than what the original price would be if someone was to go through, say, one of our other avenues. And then they're able to keep the difference of the tickets and raise that for their organization. Super easy to work with. It turns out that people who like to watch roller derby love to watch the rush, so it was really awesome. Uh, we made a decent amount of money, so we are going to plan on trying to do it again. We're all going to sit in a row, we're going to make lots of noise, we're going to have a great time because going to rush games is awesome and we really, really enjoy it. Roller derby skaters, Optimus Clubs and more are all benefiting from professional lacrosse and we wouldn't be able to do it without the support of partners like Wheaton GM. Now certainly the Saskatchewan Lacrosse Association has seen the biggest boost since the rush came to town and they're hoping to capitalize on that momentum in driving girls and women to the sport. Okay, ready? Straight back, straight back, otherwise they'll blow it. Go. We are hosting our first ever female lacrosse camp where we're introducing females to lacrosse for the first time or returning female athletes who would like to come and spend some time on the floor with other girls. For female lacrosse players in Saskatchewan, moments like these are rare. An entire afternoon dedicated to learning the sport alongside other girls and women. 
what's happening with female lacrosse is our other provinces have developed and moved ahead and now we would like to catch up. So the seed is planted, um, it's in a nourishing environment for female lacrosse and we would like for our females to come out and join. Darcy Rad is the first ever women's sector chair for the Saskatchewan Lacrosse Association. Have you done it before, girls? Okay, so ready? While never a player herself, Rad became more involved with the SLA when her then 12-year-old daughter said she'd like to try. And we kind of went, really? She said, yeah, my brother's play. So she started out as a goalie for the first year and took them to the final. Just line up right there. Since then, Annika Rat has become passionate about lacrosse, joining multiple teams over four years and traveling where opportunity takes her. I've been to Toronto and Ontario. I played with a team over in BC, which also played in Ontario area in Six Nations, which lacrosse is huge there, and it was phenomenal being there. Are you playing, Lena? Today, the 16-year-old is helping teach lacrosse basics, lead drills, and instill confidence in other girls who want to play. It's really intimidating to be like the only girl like a lot of these girls too have been the only girl like not all female teams so it's nice to gather them all females and kind of hype each other up just like the players for parents it was their first time at an all-female lacrosse camp Mackenzie's always played with all boys so she's really one of the only girl players in Moose Jaw now so we're excited to play with girls and hopefully maybe there'll be an opportunity for her in the future to play with girls that's exactly what the SLA would like to see, with the goal to put forth its first all-female provincial team. Right now, the most common option for girls in Saskatchewan is joining a co-ed team. Our idea behind our camp is that the girls could come out, learn the knowledge, learn the vocabulary, learn some of the skills that would be used for tryouts, and feel more comfortable walking into that atmosphere without feeling like they don't belong there. Outside Regina, the SLA also held all-female tri-lacrosse clinics in Saskatoon and Prince Albert, introducing new athletes to the game and each other. All the girls were really nice and encouraging towards everyone, and I got worked up a sweat, so that was really nice. Yeah, it was just lots of fun. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you for having me up. What a fantastic camp. I even got a chance to try it out. Now, the SLA is always looking for women of all experience levels to become involved, especially as coaches and officials. You can learn more at sasklacrosse.net. While fans in Saskatchewan can watch the very best at box lacrosse live at SaskTel Center, for those watching on BR Live, the experience is voiced by a very talented team. Rush TV stopped by the BR Live broadcast booth to introduce you. Well, I am a fairly new play-by-play -play broadcaster, but I have called lacrosse before. Uh, in fact, uh, Junior A Saskatchewan SWAT games, some of their playoff games. Uh, I've also done hockey, uh, some basketball, soccer as well. Um, I feel at home in the booth. I think this is actually my 19th year of broadcasting. It's kind of started out as a, a volunteer as right near the end of my playing career. and. Kind of kept going and uh, one thing led to another. Started playing lacrosse probably when I was about six years old. Uh, up through senior A lacrosse, I never made it to, to the big leagues, but uh, came close. I think, you know, having a personal relationship with a lot of it kind of allows me that extra kind of step to get more ingrained uh, with the team, which is fun. The thing I love about calling lacrosse games is just that there's something happening all the time. There's always some kind of action, whether it's goals, whether it's big hits, big saves, all that physical play. Mark Matthews, though, will narrow the gap right there as he picks the far side. And just like that, the mailman gets the rush back within two. I started playing at a young age. I actually fell in love with being a goalie, too, because I was the last line of defense. And then lacrosse, as, as a goaltender, actually took me all over the world. At the intermission. For people all over the world getting to watch a game in Saskatoon, that's a pretty special opportunity and pretty unique opportunity. And the NLL is really doing their excellent job of expanding that reach and expanding that audience. Tune in to BR Live to catch all the National Lacrosse League action, including your Saskatchewan Rush home and away games. Now, we'll have the Rush's first visit to the San Diego Seals in our next episode, but here's a look at what's in store for your next home game. Get ready, Rush Nation. It's time for Saturday Night Lacrosse. Your Saskatchewan Rush are back on co-op field at Sastel Center, taking on the Vancouver Warriors in a Western Division battle. Game presented by Wheaton GM, benefiting Operation Smile. Get your tickets now at saskrush.com. A big thanks to Wheaton GM in Saskatoon for having us here today. And thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Daniela Ponticelli for Rush TV. Go Rush Go!